Good evening. It's 6.30 on November 7, 2023. I'd like to call this session of the Bastrop City Council regular session to order. City, account, uh, City of Bastrop reserves the right to reconvene, recess, realign the regular session or, or called executive session or order of business at any time prior to adjournment. Uh, Council, we are very pleased to have tonight two uh, young individuals from the RISE program at Red Rock Elementary. We have Layla Felker. Did I do it right? Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. And Mark Hernandez, who will be leading us into the Pledge of Allegiance to both the U.S. flag as well as the Texas flag. If you will all stand. Y'all step right on up here. Face the flag. <laughs> Give these youngsters a round of applause. If y'all if y'all will stay up here, the professional photographer is gonna take a professional picture of you. Thank you, kids. We really appreciate it. If you will remain standing, we're gonna ask Dale Burke, one of our police chaplains, to come up and lead us in prayer. Dale. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you we can come together here today on this Constitutional Amendment Election Day. Lord, we thank you for this country where we have the right to vote, and thank you for each person there today, Lord, that give their citizens a right to, uh, to vote and take part in this election. Lord, I thank you for each council member here, for the mayor, city manager, each person here on this council. Lord, I thank you that they're dedicating their time to serving this community. So, Lord, we thank you for their blessings upon them as, as this city is now having such growth. And, Lord, that we are a blessed city, and we will continue to be that way as we come together. And each council person here will consider carefully each thing, request that's made and each detail of all the things that are being done. So, Lord, I pray for wisdom for each one of them and all the things they do. Each person will be heard for the things that they have that they're addressing. So, Lord, we thank you. Again, it's, it's in your word. It said there's three things required of man to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. So, Lord, I thank you. Each council member do that tonight. There's order and peace in this meeting, and everything will be done in Jesus' name. And thank you. Amen. Y'all may be seated. Our police chaplains do such an outstanding job in our community, and Mr. Burke does an outstanding job individually. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll move right on to uh, presentations on four. I just have a, a few quick items I wanted to provide info on. Uh, I wanted to make another mention that uh, last Thursday we had our Boards and Commission Appreciation Dinner. I want to thank all of our volunteers that uh, step up to our uh, citizens advisory groups. They do an outstanding job and they're very committed to what they do. Relative to the uh, banquet, I once again want to thank our city staff for the efforts that they put forth in putting that event on. Thank y'all so much for what y'all do every day. I uh, want to mention that the Old Iron birthday celebration schedule for this Thursday uh, has been postponed due to some impending weather issues, and it's been moved to uh, Tuesday the 13th uh, at the same time, 5.30 till 8 o'clock. If you haven't made a reservation, please do so. Uh, wanted to talk about this weekend. We have a big weekend coming up, our Heroes and Hot Rods Veterans Day weekend car show. Uh, if you haven't been to this car show, you've missed out, and you need to make sure that you make it to it this year. Uh, the car show is actually scheduled from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., although they'll be moving in uh, as early as Friday evening. And at 10.30, uh, the Veterans March and Tribute from the post office to the courthouse grounds where there will be a brief ceremony. And then awards, the car awards will be presented at 3 o'clock in front of our museum on Main Street. And then that evening is a red, white, and blue banquet uh, honoring our veterans. Uh, if you know of any veterans who would like to attend, although it's sold out, there still are a number of 
uh, tickets available for veterans or their uh, spouse uh, to, uh, to sit and listen to a wonderful program. Uh, and the program, the doors open at 5, and the actual program starts at 6. We'd like to see all of our veterans there. Uh, we'll move on to council members' report. Council member Krause, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, just, just a couple of things. Uh, there, we have a couple of code rodeos uh, coming up in the next week. And uh, if anybody that uh, is concerned with the building codes, the building development, or anything like that, if you could please come to those and voice your opinion on them so we can um, um, continue changing, changing everything that we're, we're changing and modifying that. And then you mentioned the old iron bridge, and there's also a, uh, a parks board meeting for the rodeo arena as well coming up in the next week. So if you could, if you're interested in uh, the Mayfest Park and the uh, Rodeo Arena, if you could please come to that and, and uh, voice your concerns with that too. And that's it, thank you. Thank you, sir. Council Member Meyer. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Jimmy really announced on the rodeo what I was gonna say, but I just wanna clarify for everyone, the bridge celebration is a week from today, next Tuesday, but that's November the 14th. So, 5.30 to 8. Thank you. Councilmember Lee. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Bastrop. Um, so what a eventful last two weeks Bastrop has had. We have had people in downtown for everything. And after the end of last week, I was like, people that keep saying there's nothing to do in Bastrop, you're not trying to find it. There was so much stuff going on in Bastrop from um, the Opera House and their last run of um, the Adams Family. Um, which again ended on a high note. They're such a close-knit group of, of actors, um, just like family, and I was able to volunteer one night. Um, last weekend, last Sunday, I volunteered. But that show is over. They are getting ready for the next show, and also, um, if you enjoyed this season's shows, they have opened up voting for the awards for Austin. It's kind of like the Academy Awards of stage plays, um, so visit the Opera House website, Facebook, um, and probably on their, their actual website as well. You can find the link. So if you enjoyed all of the shows this season, please vote and support the Opera House. Um, Boards and Commissions Banquet, as well as the, um, I attended the Family Crisis Center first annual, um, well, no, back up, the Boards and Commissions uh, Banquet, and I also con attended a casino night in Smithville for their uh, Towers Nursing Home. They're raising money to provide more services to their residents. So um, I was invited to go to that. Of course, the boards and banquets. We appreciate everyone that gives their time to serve in this community because it is not paid. So you gotta have a passion for it and those everyone that serves on these boards do. Halloween night was a blast, saw lots of people. Um, it wasn't too cold. Uh, I was able to walk from my house downtown and walked about an hour and a half. There's lots of people downtown enjoying the events there. And then this weekend I got out to the Bastrop County Animal Shel Shelter Fall Furry Fundraiser. And um, it was a little festival out there. I was kind of surprised that I was going to be the only one driving up. But no, it was packed. They had a lot of boots and a lot of animals being adopted. So I enjoyed that. A couple of updates. Uh, the library board is, are, are taking applications for scholarships. So if you have seniors that are in need of scholarships, please get with the library board. Um, and they are, will be closed. Thanksgiving, November the 10th through the 11th, uh, the 23rd and the, through the 25th, and then re reopening on the 27th for Thanksgiving. Um, I promised the Family Crisis Center I would announce their annual holiday gala, which is December the 2nd. They need sponsors, so if anyone wants to sponsor that event or attend that event, please reach out to the Family Crisis Center. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is recognize our parks and public works. Um, when I look at our weekly memos, it's just that we don't see them all the time or maybe we're not paying attention because we're trying to get here, trying to get there, but they do so much work um, in the community with our maintaining our city and in our parks. Um, I especially want to thank them for installing the water at Delgado. 
and uh, they're installing benches at Delgado. I'm so happy to see that. The lights are on, the gates closing. I literally live right in front of Delgado, and I'm the protector of Delgado Park. So I'm happy to see that they are out there and building that park out because people in our community really enjoy bringing their kids and dogs out, and we need to kind of ramp that up and have more for them out there. And that is my report. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mayor Pro Tim Kirkland. In the interest of saving everyone's time, I don't have anything for today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilmember Plunkett. Nothing to add. Outstanding. We will, uh, we have no work sessions or briefings scheduled, nor do we have any staff for board reports. I am so sorry. Madam City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Just a few items that uh, you may have already mentioned. The first one that I need to bring to the attention of Council and the public, as I was informed of it late yesterday, is the utility bills were sent out with an incorrect due date. Staff has uh, sent out mass emails to those folks who are on auto draft to inform folks they are not late and we will not be penalizing anybody. We've um, also put information out on the website. So for the general public at large, we sincerely apologize. That is just a, a key error. Your bills are not late. They are still due on the normal due date of the month. The old Iron Bridge, we know the grant was denied. We got word from TxDOT. We are moving forward with the CO issuance. As you know, we, prog them, we programmed that into the budget um, with no impact to the tax rate. And everybody's already mentioned the celebration being postponed on November 14th due to rain, being postponed until November 14th due to rain. Um, we do have the code rodeos coming up. Next slide, please. On November 14th and 15th from 9 to 4 at the Hampton Inn. Uh, December 16th is a Saturday. Um, that is also 9 to 4, and that will help folks who could not get off of work in the November time frame. January date is to be determined. Um, we had initially selected January the 13th, but realized that was the MLK long weekend, and so um, cognizant of the fact that some folks like to take a long holiday, we chose not to schedule on that day, so we were looking at the weekend before or the weekend after for the January date. Um, we will be picking the transportation impact fee back up in December after we've had the discussions at the Code Rodeo. Um, tonight, we have the votes on reallocation of the sales tax to apply to streets. If that is successful, we will plan future workshops for street repair and um, prioritization. Um, many of you mentioned the open house on November 13th. It will be here at Council Chambers. Um, we will be discussing dirt <laughs> and a variety of other things that were presented in the report. That preliminary report has been um, mailed to Council. We've got some final tweaks to make before we throw it up on the website, but that should be in the next day or so. That's what I have. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. As noted earlier, there are no work sessions or briefings, uh, no staff or board reports, so we'll move to item number seven, citizen comments. Madam City Secretary, I have two uh, citizen comments. Do we have any others? No, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, our first citizen comment, that signed, our citizen has signed up to comment is Stephanie Jenkins. If you'll come to the podium, please, to state your name and your address, and you have three minutes. Thank you, Colin. I hope you'll put those slides up. I'm Stephanie Jenkins, and I live at 1302 Pecan, and I've been cleaning the headstones of many of my husband's ancestors who are buried at Fairview. So I'm aware of the lawn care that goes on there. The elder north side of the cemetery has not been cared for this year. Weeds and runners three to four feet long overrun the stones so that they aren't legible. Weeds inside the stones outlining the graves have overtaken the stones. Then recently, the elder side was eat eat due, the weed eater was used due to the Halloween event on October the 21, while the south side, the newer graves, were left unmowed. There, the weeds were 18 to 24 inches high in open, easily mowed areas. The city of Bastrop has a fiduciary responsibility to provide perpetual care to the graves. In Fairview, lots were sold to families with that promise. You as councilmen should feel responsible um, to the public to hold up that promise. Many of you weren't born here and probably don't have relatives in Fairview. 
um, and don't see this as a priority. But the families who are caring for the graves of their loved ones do see that you are not providing perpetual care. Families are weeding the areas around their loved ones' headstones and doing the jobs at the cemetery that the city should be providing. Before another park is built that must be maintained by the city or another festival is held with cost to the city, the landscaping of Fairview must be prioritized. Fairview should be included in the job description for all the landscaping of the parks, all the buildings, all the structures, all the festivals. Citizens want safety, their roads safe to drive on, they want clean water, reliable electricity, and their garbage removed. The responsibilities of the promised services prioritized first, maintenance of Fairview being one of these. Um, I see murals and crossing paintings and recreational activities and banners, the things that cost the city money, being provided before the money it would take to maintain Fairview. The dead can't speak. Hopefully they aren't voting. Many of the dead no longer have family members in this area to advocate for maintenance. Cultures are judged by how they take care of their dead. Please review your policies about landscaping at Fairview and provide the funds to mow the weeds, water, and perform tree trimming. And this happens to be two pictures I took. The one on the right is a water hydrant where the handle's missing. So even me, who provide free services to clean the stones, I can't clean the stones. And then this one happens to be Bertha the Bothy Ravensburg. And those weeds, I mean, they've been there a long time to grow that much. You can't read the writing in the, on the footstone or in the headstones. And even when they are mowed some, um, they don't blow it away, so everything is illegible. And up there at the top left of Bertha Bothy's grave, that's a kind of an area of weeds. I mean, nothing is happening there. I've mowed a lot of grass in my life. And none of that's being taken care of. And I'd ask you to rethink your funding of the maintenance at Fairview. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. And our city manager was taking copious notes to make sure that we pursue this. Thank you so much. Uh, next person scheduled to speak is uh, Kirk Harrison. State your, you, Mayor, Council you bet. State your name and address, and you got three minutes. Uh, my name is Kirk Harrison. I don't know if you know my address. I'm with Frontier Waste. I just came to introduce myself. There's a possibility you may be going out for a trash next year for a bid. And I just wanted to introduce myself. It's what I do. I am the uh, municipal rep for Frontier Waste. We are a Texas company. We have units all the way from Dallas down to Poteet. And we sure would like to be right here in Bastrop. So uh, let you know, I have a lot of experience in the business. I've been 28 years in trash business, and I did spend 12 years as a councilman for the city of Bull Verde. So I know a little bit on that side of the house too. I appreciate your time. You will see me again next year as it gets closer, but I wanted to, before the year ended, I wanted to say hello and just say, I left some cards over there in case you have any questions. You have my email and my personal cell phone. That's it. Outstanding. Thank, Thank you, you for so your time. Much. We will now move on to the consent agenda. Is, does any member of council want to remove one of the items from the consent agenda? Does anybody in the audience wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Seeing no indication. Madam City Secretary, if you will read the consent agenda. The consent agenda reads as follows. Item 8A, consider action to approve city council minutes from the October 24th, 2023 regular meeting Item 8B, consider action to approve the second reading of ordinance number 2023-40 of the Bastrop City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, amending the Bastrop Code of Ordinances, Chapter 13, Utilities, adding Article 13.14, establishing regulations for wireless transmission facilities, antenna towers. Item 8C, Consider action to approve resolution number R-2023-149 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, awarding a community support service agreement for services associated with operating, marketing, and the providing of cultural art and theater services to the Bastrop Opera House at a cost of $169,991. Attached as Exhibit A. 
authorizing the city manager to execute all necessary documents for the agreement, providing for a repealing clause, and establishing an effective date. Item 8D, consider action to approve resolution number R-2023-150 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, awarding a community support service agreement for services associated with operating, marketing, and providing of cultural art to the Lost Pines Art Center at a cost of $149,109. Attached as Exhibit A, authorizing the city manager to execute all necessary documents for the contract providing for a repealing clause and establishing an effective date. Item 8E, consider action to approve resolution number R-2023-151 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, awarding a community support service agreement for operating, marketing, and staffing a historical museum and visitor center, and providing visitor center services to the Bastrop County Historical Society at a cost of $289,107, attached as Exhibit A, authorizing the city manager to execute all necessary documents for the contract providing for a repealing clause and establishing an effective date. Item 8F, consider action to approve resolution number R-2023-165 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop approving the 2023 tax roll and tax levy, providing for a repealing clause and providing for an effective date. This concludes the consent agenda. Council, the City Secretary has laid out a consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. I have a motion from Councilmember Lee. Second. I have a second from Councilmember Crouch. Madam City Secretary, if you will call the roll. Councilmember Lee? Yes. Councilmember Crouch? Yes. Councilmember Meyer? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kirkland? Yes. Councilmember Plunkett? Yes. Thank you, Council. We'll move on to item nine items for individual consideration. 9A, consider action to approve the first reading of ordinance number 2023-41 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, authorizing and allowing for one, an increase in employee contribution rate to the Texas Employee Retirement System, TMRS, and two, adopting annually accruing updated service credits and transfer updated service credits and annually accruing annuity increases also referred to as cost of living adjustments for retirees and beneficiaries of deceased retirees as attached in Exhibit A, providing for the findings of fact and enactment repealer severability, providing for an effective date, codification, proper notice, and move to include on the December 12, 2023 agenda for a second reading. Ms. Cantrell. Yes, thank you, Mayor, Council Member, City Manager. I'm so excited to bring this to Council this evening. This is a really big deal for our employees, and uh, the ball started rolling in fiscal year 22 when we started the employees asking them about going from a 6% contribution to 7 it was a resounding yes, please move forward. So in fiscal year 23, fast forward, council wisely agreed and said, hey, this is going to benefit the city of Bastrop and its employees for our retention efforts and our recruitment efforts. So uh, with that being said, I'm just going to do the little two-minute short sp um, spill on this. Uh, the funding for this increase was authorized by ordinance number 2023-33, which passed and was approved on September 26, 2023. And those funds were appropriately um, funded out of uh, water, wastewater, BPNL, and the general fund. And what's in front of you with the ordinance tonight, there's three basic things. The only change in the ordinance is that we're going from a 6% contribution to a 7% contribution. We've always done the updated service credit, and we are 100% city on that. Not all cities do that, so that is a, a good thing for our city. And then it's a readoption of the repeating 70% COLA cost for our annuitants that receive that. That's not changed. Um, the reason that we're here tonight, it's by statute. When you change that contribution rate, and we also have to readopt the uh, updated service credit as well as the COLAs, that we have to take that to ordinance because, of course, there is a cost with that change. And um, so we're crossing the T's and dotting the I's for TMRS, bringing this ordinance to you for approval. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Any questions for Ms. Cantrell? Thank you for the information. Seeing no questions, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. I have a motion from Councilmember Meyer. Second. I have a second from Councilmember Crouch. Any further discussion, Council? 
Seeing none indicated, Madam City Secretary, if you will call the roll. Councilmember Meyer? Yes. Councilmember Crouch? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kirkland? Yes. Councilmember Plunkett? Yes. Councilmember Lee? Yes. These are things we have to do to, to recruit and maintain good employees, so thank you all so much. Move on to uh, 9B, consider action to approve resolution number R-2023-163 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, approving a contract with electric cabs of North America to provide transportation services in the amount not to exceed $134,010 or $410 at tax exhibit B, authorize the city manager to execute all necessary documents providing for repealing clause and establishing an effective date. Ms. Butts. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Yes, we're asking <clears throat> Council to approve a contract with, with ECABS. Um, their service schedule is provided in the packet, but I just wanted to outline it. Uh, it's Thursday through Sunday um, at various hours, and it also includes the week of spring break, Monday through Wednesday from 3 to death. Oops, sorry, from three to nine, and then also an additional ECAB for the Christmas, uh, Lost Pines Christmas Day on December 9th, 2023. Um, the funding sources, uh, in previous years, it was a uh, grant that provided funding for the program, and then last year, that grant ended, so City Council approved funding out of the hot fund um, for that program. Data shows that less than 1% of the usage goes towards uh, tourism, so we are requesting uh, that it be funded out of one-time expense from the general fund excess revenues account. And so I have added a new, it was incorrect in the packet, so I added a new little sheet up there for y'all that breaks down the budget for that account. You'll see it, it's a little over $1 million for that one-time expense account, and that subtracts out uh, $250,000 that's gonna be allocated to parks, and then with the subtraction of the $130,410, that leaves an additional $843,248 in that account. And then I just had a little budget, a breakdown of ECAB's use. You'll see um, the tourism was like 0.8%, but a lot of the, ECABs are used to like go around town shopping or going home, and then a big uh, use is uh, people who are 55 years or older. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. Thank you, ma'am. Councilmember Lee. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I have a couple of questions about the ECABs. Um, one, how do we determine if it's being used for tourism? Are they asking the riders, right? And then two, there was a comment mentioned that we weren't advertising on the cabs that they were free. Did that change? Um, so yes, they have a Google form that whenever you book it, they it populate. So that's how they get their data. Um, the advertising, um, what are you, can you clarify? What it you was mentioned that people don't know that it's free if they're downtown, that they can hop on a cab because nowhere on the cab does it say that it's free. Oh, okay. We, we so that's that definitely place. something that we need to revisit. Work, yeah, revisit on that. And then my second question, or my third question is, so if, if we're only calculating 1% of tourists use the ECAP, could that be, could we use it in a different way that would qualify them for the hot funds? One example I could give is whenever I'm in another city, I, one of my favorite things to do is the hop on, hop off type of tour bus. I think Bastrop has plenty of history to, um, to have something like that implemented in Bastrop. I don't know if that comes from Visit Bastrop or Main Street or what group would, would handle it. But my, my question is, what I was wondering was if we use, say, an ECAB a Saturday for the purpose of touring Bastrop and it's paid, they pay $10, they get taken all over the place, including the cemetery, the parks, what have you, would that then qualify us for hot funds because we're using it for tourists or, or is it strictly we can only use it if it's generating? So it's the same thing when they hop on and hop off, the form that they fill out has to be, I'm a tourist and I'm staying at a local hotel or a local Airbnb or something like that. I'm from, I'm from out of town essentially. And so the hot fund isn't necessarily, um, I can equal one head in a bed for every hop on and hop off, but it is at least something for folks in our hotels to be able to enjoy. 
So if we modified it in the way that you're saying, I would take it offline from this group that's doing the shopping, et cetera, et cetera, and I would just do a tourist related to our assets and those kinds of things, but we would still have to track it and payment would be commensurate with those people using it. Right, and I think that it's not something that we could start like Saturday, right? But if maybe we do a trial, I was just trying to uh, thinking and reading the packet, how can we use it in a way that more, maybe more tourists would ride it if they knew that they could do a tour all over Bastrop instead of just going downtown, maybe they would buy on and maybe we would increase tourists using it. Um, I just don't know who would lead that but as a way to try to get, get funding because how does us switching this funding to the excess fund, how negative of an impact of that to our excess? So, so you saw that, it's 130,000, that brings us down to 843. Um, the bigger conversation is if you go back to the chart, you will see that many people are using it for work uh, and short-term commutes, which um, the mayor, you know, prior employee of CARDS, that's a, that's a bigger conversation. Is that something else that we need to address for our residents who need to get to work or need to do their shopping? Or um, it's, it's a different manner than the e-cabs were meant for. The e-cabs really were meant for a tourism type. But, uh, you know, our residents have figured out that it's an easy jaunt to get uh, here and there. So okay. it's 130,000 dip. And that it's not a long-term solution. If, if this is how we choose to continue to use them, it will be funded out of the general fund. Okay, and, there, and does it cause any other negative impact to any of our other um, uses for the excess fund? So, sure, 130,000 could go to parks, 130,000 could go right. to police and fire and all of libraries, everything else that's in the general fund. Which is my point. So if we can maybe start looking at ways that we could increase the use of it from tourists, because we get plenty of tourists, and one thing that I thought about was the hop-on, hop-off effect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You know, there's a tremendous economic multiplier from this, uh, both from work as well as for, uh, for shopping. And I think we need to, to make the determination using the, utilizing the, uh, the American Public Transit uh, Association's uh, economic multiplier for public transit. I think we can get a better idea of the impact it has on our community. I appreciate the question, though. Mayor Pro Tem Kirkland. Do we happen to have any data on the number of riders per ride? Yes, it was in the staff report. Um, oh, no, not, not numbers of riders per ride. I just yeah. have the per ride number. Right. Sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, um, you know, if you take the, the total dollar amount and you divide it by the number of rides, it's, uh, or no, sorry, number of riders. It's not number of rides, it's number of riders. Mm -hmm. It's $27.43 per rider. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you've got, you know, say two people in that ECAB, that trip is costing the city $54, $55. And um, it does seem excessive. Uh, and, and I know that it sits there, you know, we, we pay an hourly rate for it to sit there, but. I guess what I'm wondering is if there is anything else that we can do to provide a service that doesn't cost so much. So the city of Kyle used a grant mm -hmm. um, and Kyle is the Pi Capital and so somehow they worked in Pi. And so um, the city of Kyle has a partnership with Uber and other uh, mass uh, transportation providers where they give residents two to three free uh, rides within the city limits, not to exceed $10. So they essentially take that $47 impact, they reduce it to 30 and say every resident gets $30 a month for Uber or those kinds of master, it's Uber specifically. Um, so we do have some creative elements similar too because Kyle's in the same situation. They're not part of Cap Metro. There aren't buses that go down there. They are split by 35, specifically down the spine. So one side of Kyle is on the north and south, very much like Bastrop and 71. Mayor, is there, in, in your familiarity with carts and, and even the service that we provide here in Bastrop, is there anything that can be done there? I think there's always opportunities to have that discussion. I think that utilizing the uh, already publicly funded uh, capillary rural transportation system to, to utilize for some of this service 
could then point to ECAFs toward, toward a more tourism-based uh, component. I think, that, I think that that's something we need to have that discussion with CARTS uh, and a fairly robust conversation, especially with the, uh, with the idea of uh, the additional funding that may or may not be out there at this point in time and the changing dynamics of our region. Uh, the Kyle area falls into the uh, catchment area of Capital Metro, although they don't utilize Capital Metro service. There, there's some funding available through them uh, for Kyle that's not available to Bastrop, but we can work with CARTS on that also. Hmm. How, would we, how would we work with CARTS? Like what, what would the process be to have that conversation? Contact CARTS and say, let's have a conversation about a robust transportation program. Okay. Um, how long would something like that take, just ballpark? Well, they're a fairly small organization, and they can be quite nimble. I think, I think we could probably have that conversation within, within a couple of months, if not earlier. Okay. Um, you know, we, we certainly have discretionary funds right now to, to pay for something like this. Uh, and then if it's used in that manner, that means we can't use those funds for something else. Um, also, uh, if we pay for it next year, it's going to come out of the general fund. It'll be in the budget. Uh, if that were to have been in the general fund this year, we would have either had to have cut something else or raise household property taxes by, you know, $15, $20 a household to, to cover the expense. Um, so... I mean, this is certainly a nice to have. It is a nice to have, but and and, and discretionary. Um, but I, I really would like us to see if there's a way we can provide services at a lower cost. So th that's kind of what I had to say about it. I, I would, if we tried to approve this, I would vote against it. I would, I would be in favor of tabling it if we got to that. Their, their current schedule, their currently hourly rate is $81 an hour is what they're charging yes, sir. us. And we can certainly look at curtailing their schedule in some way, shape, or form to, uh, to mitigate some of that cost. Mm -hmm. uh, I would think there's a way that we could ascertain where their uh, primary ridership, the, the primary hours of their ridership, the primary ridership is coming from. Yes. So we can make a determination of whether or not this set number of hours is really what's required that drives it up to 130000 a year. And we could probably uh, mitigate that in some way, shape, or form. I think they already have that data. It's just getting mm -hmm. it to get it to council for our, for our mm -hmm. consideration. Thank you. Uh, council Member Plunkett. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think it is expensive, you know, per ride. It is expensive per household. Um, and my understanding, um, to answer council member Lee's uh, issue with having it be more of a tourist um, asset. Uh, one of the problems, if I'm not mistaken, is that uh, it can't go on the service road of 71. So it pretty much eliminates its use at hotels. Is that correct? I believe so. I have to confirm. Yeah, that. that's what I remember when yeah. it it came about at the beginning, which that's unfortunate because that would be our avenue to make it, you know, make it work for uh, for hot funds. Mm -hmm. well, they can't utilize, they can't access the hotels by the 71 corridor, but they can certainly cross over by Walmart and access some of those hotels over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, are, and are, do the hotels know that? And are the hotels providing that as a, you know, to their guests as a, you know, hey, you can get around you know, with this and and how practical is that from a ecabs you know will the ecabs you know will they not pick them up if they're over at you know walmart or whatever yeah i don't know for sure what the advertising mechanisms are set in place at the hotels but that's definitely something that we could work with them to push out to their um clients or okay. people who stay there and they do, they do access hotels. I've seen them over there by Walmart mm -hmm. or by the Hampton Inn. The, the level of service over there, I'm, I'm unsure of. But, uh, yeah, that's definitely an idea to push it with to more through the hotels. Okay. Colin, I just sent you the usage data on Teams, if you don't mind bringing that up. Uh, Mayor and Council, it's now in your email box. Okay. And the other, uh, 
the other thing I had was, you know, I, at, at this point, if it's not going to be hot funds eligible, I, I think we should, you know, look at, you know, you know, throw it open and see what other things are available. I like, I mean, the Kyle thing, you know, sounds like a pretty good thing that would be available to more people and that might create the, it does. It creates an it, economic stimulus for jobs. Right. It absolutely does. Well, and it also creates the um, the demand that the rideshare company would need to operate longer hours, which you know because they're they can work whenever they want to. Those those drivers can, and so and that's been one of our issues. The the times that it's needed, you know, the most they're not open. You know, you know they're not running. You know, like in the late evening hours and things like that. So, yeah, I'd like to see if we could do better, you know, with the same amount or less money. A better, okay. So um, the information is up on the screen. This is data directly from eCabs. Um, if you look in the upper uh, right-hand quadrant, you will see that the vast majority are not first-time users. They're recurrent users. So to, to Councilmember Lee's point, they're not tourists, they're, they're locals. Um, and they are mostly using it when it's sunny i.e. too hot to walk. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of shaded areas. And um, our passenger age is a little bit older. It's the 35 to 55 plus demographic. That takes up more than half of the slice of pie. So as we, again, start to talk about multimodal and start to talk about what's the best passageway and how do we get there, I'd be interested to know what routes the ECABs are taking. Is it an unsafe route? Is that why our folks aren't walking? Is it too far? Is it not enough connectivity? Um, and then if you go further up on the next page, you will see that the vast majority of ridership is um, Saturday, sun Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So it is over a weekend uh, period, and the vast majority of users are female. Now I will say that's not probably the vast majority of users, it's the female who's faster on the phone being able to type in the information on the app. I think the hours of service of, and, and the, the level of service provided each hour is a good indica indication. Did you not say they operate from Thursday through Sunday yes, only? Yes, mm -hmm. And I, th I think we need to get, need to get a, uh, a rundown on what hours they're operating in. And I think we also, as a council, are obligated to look at, at seeing not only the choice riders, the, the tourist riders or people who ride it in case they've had a little bit too much to drink, as a, from the transit dependent, because the transit dependent appears based upon the age and based upon the trip purpose, it appears as though the majority of them are transit dependent. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to make a determination again in the context of what hours of service that's, that uh, is being provided. Uh, Council Member Crouch. I, I had a couple of questions. Um, do we know, so it was around $27 per ride, uh, just doing the math on it, and if, that's if an individual, one person is in it. Do we know what the same average trip would be if you took a Uber or some other mode of transportation in comparison? Is it $10, is it $20 or $30? Mm. Any idea on an average? I don't. Um. Just from personal experience, it kind of depends on the location you're at and where you're trying to go and how far away it is. Because <laughs> if we're looking at it from a financial standpoint, it might be less expensive to partner with one of the other ride agencies versus a $27. Maybe it's less expensive or maybe it would open up some bargaining for, for this. It was great when it was free and it was a grant. Um, but now that it's coming out of our general fund and not paid by the hotel tax, it's that doesn't look that attractive anymore. Um, another question was, what is the chance of grant funding again? Is there another grant that can be applied for? I'm not sure. I think what, the uh, grant that they had, they the company themselves had acquired, so I'm not sure if there was... Anything. It was actually a Department of Energy grant yep. that Lone Star Clean Fuel Alliance applied for in the contract with North American Electric Cab uh, to actually provide the service. Uh, Bastrop was one of five cities that were funded the Department of Energy grant. It was mm -hmm. a three-year grant to introduce the concept within these various communities. And what all that money has dried up to some extent. Uh, that's not to say there might not be uh, a different additional grant money available. 
but yeah, if there's uh, some other one some other way to fund it maybe we we should look at that mm -hmm. uh, absolutely um, um, council member crouch to answer your question about how much an uber ride would cost I entered um, City Hall to Walmart Supercenter, and right now an Uber who, that fits four people is six dollars and seventy nine cents. Six dollars. One way. Okay. Um, do we have a list of you? And maybe you just answered this for me, Mayor. But uh, is there a list of other cities that had the free cab program? You said we were one of five. Is that and right? we were by far the smallest. Okay. The rest of them were fairly, uh, fairly or large urbanized areas that have a fairly robust public transit program and, and additional funding. So that's another question. How are we the only one of the only cities in the state that are offering free rides uh, for residents or whoever's here? I mean, uh, most everybody I think is having to pay for a bus or cab or scooter or something and it, you're, you're having to pay a fee for it so I'm, I'm not sure is there any how many what's the percentage of cities that have a free cab system that I don't know there's a large number of programs that don't charge for their public transit program uh, Pottery Island's one of them they don't charge anything for people to hop on and hop off their trolleys that operate up and down the their to the beach hotels there's other programs in North Texas that, that, that there's no charge to the riders. Uh, and most of the times fares come up to, uh, come up to about 8 to 12% of the total uh, operating cost. So they all are losing propositions, but transportation is an expensive commodity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and this is just ignorance of the ECAB on my part, but there's the small ECABs, right, and then there's a larger van is that not part of the ecab right the larger the larger one that's a paid a paid thing the larger ones belong to carts that's mm -hmm. your public transit provider is that free there's a there's a cost that goes on. i think it's a dollar a ride on that yeah it's, but it's fairly but it's not expensive free. and that's still available even if the ecabs weren't here you could still get on the carts that's that's, cor that's correct because they have different operating hours and different operating characteristics okay but, I, but, but to your point, we need to, uh, to uh, enter into conversations with the carts and see what they, as a public transit provider, can do to help us as a city offset a cost to provide an extra service to our citizens. And I think that's a, that's a conversation we need to have uh, pretty quickly. To Mayor Pro Tem Kirkland's point, we should have it within the next you know, 90 days. If not yeah. really. so. um, and then is there a tax that... Uh, I know since it was a grant, there probably was no tax that the city was receiving. I know larger cities are making the caps pay a, a city fee to operate in the fee, so there's some income generated by that, and that wasn't the case with the ECABs, right? We don't get anything from that. We just spend money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that was it. That was all of my questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilmember Lee. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I just wanted to make a point because, um, yes, this is coming out of a different fund, which will impact other area, other things that we need to get done or, or could be using the funding to get done. However, I do feel like we shouldn't do a disservice to the community of people that have used, are using the ECAB. Um, we see an older population of people are using it. I know a lot of older people that are using it. I'll be honest, when it was first announced, I was like, why do we need a cab and fast drop? But I never see them empty when um, they're riding, when I'm coming home from work. So I don't think it would be fair to just snatch it away either um, because of a situation that we put ourselves in, um, especially for our older population. It might, it might have nothing to do with weather. They're over 55, they have health issues, they need groceries, they, it's their way to get out of the house. Um, maybe in talking this over with uh, carts, we can figure out a way to maybe put an age cap on it where you don't pay if you're over 65 or something. But our, our, we are still an older population community. Our older population has enjoyed this service um, because it has helped them greatly. 
financially and um, again just being able to get out of the house and go get groceries without having to call somebody. I know someone that had a flat tire. Um, he couldn't get over to um, discount because he had a flat tire but he needed to go pay for a tire. He, he called carts. I think it was the carts one that he called to get over there. Um, so it's providing a service. It's not that it's unattractive. I, I'm sure there are plenty of people in the community that are saying this is not an unattractive to us. We need it for our daily life. So to just snatch it away after we've introduced it just because now there's a fee, um, I think would be unfair to many of our residents. Uh, the contract ends December? November 30th. November 30th. So if we take no action tonight, then there's, it goes away. The service goes away. You're going to be leaving a lot of residents who rely on ECAPS to take care of their daily life. And I think that that would be unfair to citizens. I would like to see it pass. And then we, we continue to have the discussion for next year um, because we don't want to once again put a burden on our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments for Ms. Butts? Uh, Councilmember Meyer. Thank you, Mayor. My question isn't for Ms. Butts. Thank you, and I really appreciate your presentation. Mine is uh, just to uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kirkland, you brought up some very interesting points. And uh, the idea to table this, I think we need a lot more information before we can um, go full steam ahead for another year. So. Mayor Pro Tem Kirkland, do you have a remedy for the interim in the meantime as we collect information to uh, not just take it totally away because it expires on the 30th? Do you have a suggestion as to how we could remedy that? Can I suggest a few, a few things? Please. So council does meet next uh, week. You do have a called meeting as part of the code radio. Give us a week to perhaps do one of two things. Say, ECABs, we need additional information. Let us go on a month to month. Um, that way, if council ultimately makes the decision to go away, we at least have some lead time with them. Uh, and then also um, look at the Kyle model and at least have a preliminary discussion with CARTS. Would it also be possible for us to do a three-month extension of the existing contract? Even if they're new rate, that would give us the time to have the conversations that Correct. we need to have as well as part of the information required. Councilmember Crouch. That was my question. Is it, is it possible to do a short extension of time just so we can gather the information up? Um, and then... Also, I just I just want to make sure again. So the e caps would go away if this isn't passed, but the uh, carts buses would still be here. Correct? correct. Correct. Okay. So there wouldn't be no transportation. It just wouldn't be completely free. completely free. And I know that we could use the. Um, we have a lot of things to pay for, and there's uh, a lot of a lot of need for transportation uh, fixes, but we also need parks, we need the streets paved, we need infrastructure put in, and um, we didn't have this two or three years ago, and it was great, like I said, when it was a, when it was a grant and it was free, but uh, if we still have an inexpensive means of transportation available, then um, maybe we need to look at it. But if, the, if we could do a short-term extension until we got some more information, um, I mean, that's an option for sure. Thanks. Councilmember Meyer, I look like I'm going to cut yes, you off. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to table this item until we get more information, as our city manager has said, uh, within next week. Uh, more information can be gathered. So I make a motion to table this uh, currently. Second. I have a motion and I have a second. Any further discussion? Question. Do, do we have to um, ask you, city manager, to extend the three months in our motion city manager uh no we oh. we hope to bring information to you for action on the 14th at that point then okay we'll thank you mm -hmm. any further discussion seeing none madam city secretary if you'll call the roll 
Okay, I apologize. The second, who made the second? The uh, Councilmember Plunkett. Plunkett. Thank you. Councilmember Meyer? Yes. Councilmember Plunkett? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kirkland? Yes. Councilmember Lee? Yes. Councilmember Crouch? Yes. Okay, Council, we've tabled this until uh, the 14th. Thank you all so much. We'll move on to item 9C, consider action to approve the first reading of ordinance number 2023-42 of the Bastrop City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, amending Bastrop Code of Ordinances, Chapter 1, General Provisions, Article 1.10, Park, Section 1.10.002, Park Rules, and providing for findings of fact, repealer, severability, codification, effective date, proper notice, and meeting, and include on the December 12, 2023, Council Agenda for a second reading. Ms. Moore. Good evening. Um, at the moment, it is unlawful for folks to swim or wade um, off the bank of the Colorado River in the city limits. What we are recommending is that we change the ordinance to allow this activity. Um, we are saying we will post the signs that people are swimming at their own risk with no lifeguards. Uh, we're recommending approval. Thank you, ma'am. Questions? Mayor Pro Tem Kirkland. The uh, expanded language in the ordinance um, it I guess it eliminates the restriction and then it says the public shall be allowed to enter the water uh, while embarking or disembarking boat canoe or other flotation device and may swim at their own risk but it it still is limited to those activities and doesn't for instance you can't stand in it and fish you cannot uh, baptize your daughter in the river. You can't, you know, it, depending on how you look at it. Um, and so I guess, Alan, this becomes a question for you. I mean, I guess in the absence of any language, everything is permissible. And this language does not really restrict anything. I mean, it certainly says some things are allowed, but it's not speaking against a restriction. So I'm, uh, like, does this allow someone to fish uh, while standing ankle deep in the water? Council, Mayor Pro Tem Kirkman, I think you're correct in that not specifically prohibiting language would in effect make it difficult for us to prosecute for that, which is the remedy for violating an ordinance. So I think as a practical matter that that's correct. I, looking at the language that's in the amendment, you know, swimming, I think would be interpreted pretty broadly. <laughs> is splashing, is wading, uh, those sorts of things gonna fall under swimming? I think in most definitions it, it does. So I don't think it's necessary for us to list all the things that's allowed, um, but we certainly could expand that if uh, the council thinks it would be helpful. Well, there was other language in um, the, the stricken words that says, um, enter, wade, swim, or engage in any aquatic activity was what was previously forbidden. And it just seems like that we could say the same thing, but in the reverse. And so we could say the public may enter, wade, swim, or engage in any aquatic activity at their own risk. So instead of the word swim, we absolutely put that prior list in and then, and then I'm quite happy. And I think that, that could be a motion that you make tonight and we have an amended version that's approved. Okay. Councilmember Lee. Thank you, Mayor. And I just, I have one more word nitpicking thing as I was reading through it. Um, and it said the public may swim it at their own risk and shall, it says the public may swim at their own risk and shall obey all posted signs and lifeguards on duty on the banks of the Colorado River. Furthermore, the city of Bastrop does not assume any liability for any residents swimming in the Colorado. And I thought, why does it say residents? Shouldn't it say anybody? That's a question for the lawyer. It's a nitpicking <laughs> word, I know, but when I read no, it, I was good. like... That's excellent point. Uh, so I'm visiting. I can swim. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Lee, are you suggesting you're not going to take on liability for tourists or visitors? <laughs> I would not get in the water, personally. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can help it, you with I that. Part of, I think as part of our floor amendments, we would just say person. Thank you.
Any further questions, comments? I'll entertain a motion with language changes. Motion to approve with language changes. I think we should specify the language changes. I think changes. we need to specify that language. Well, I thought you said we don't have the specification. Oh, you're going to do it? Got it. You okay. already wrote it out. I should have uh, known that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so motion to approve with the following changes. In the phrase that says the public may swim at their own risk, replace the word swim with enter, comma, wade, comma, swim, comma, or engage in any aquatic activity. And then in the sentence that says the city of Bastrop does not assume any liability for any resident swimming in the Colorado River, change the word residents to persons. Any persons? Persons. Okay, we have a motion with the language changes. Do I have a second? Second. second. I have a second from Council Member Meyer. The motion was made by Mayor Pro Tem Kirkland. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Madam City Secretary, if you will call the roll. Mayor Pro Tem Kirkland? Yes. Council Member Meyer? Yes. Council Member Plunkett? Yes. Council Member Lee? Yes. Council Member Crouch? Yes. And staff will be bringing us back a, re a reworded ordinance for a second reading. Thank you, Council. Uh, moving on to item 9D. Hold a public hearing and consider action to approve the second reading of ordinance number 2023-35, approving the Reed Ranch Plan Development District, changing the zoning for 24.462 acres out of the Nancy Blakey survey from PT Rural to a planned development district with a P4 mixed base zoning located at 615 West Highway 71 within the city limits of Bastrop, Texas. Mr. Higgins. <laughs> Close. Uh, it's no, the next you're not best Kennedy, thing. My Lord. I know. Sorry about this. She's uh, out of town, so you get me tonight. Just so. me completely off. Good evening. Um, so this is the. We're here for the second hearing on the Reed Ranch uh, Plan Development District. Um, this is a quick overview of our uh, standard procedures that we go through for when we're approving our PDDs, what we look for, and, and what we ensure is in each of these. Um, the location of it, as you know, is north of 71, um, next to the, uh, just west of the Bastrop Middle School and east of the settlement apartments um, there, and then spans across Riverside Grove there, uh, just that, that south portion of it. Um, the, from the, <clears throat> our taking from the last uh, meeting that we had with the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, all the units on the, uh, and I guess I'll just go to this map, all the uh, apartment buildings on the, um, well, so the orientation here is off a little bit. North is to the right side of the map. Um, so on the east side, these two apartment buildings here will be limited to two stories. Um, this street right here uh, at Jessica Place will be closed. Um, there won't be an, an access through there at this time. The apartment buildings on the east or the west side of the um, uh, development will be uh, able to be four stories in height. And then um, <clears throat> the, uh, the other thing on the uh, east side here, there's going to be a lot more uh, landscaping and uh, trees and screening and um, kind of a site visit, you know, a, a make it so it's not as easy to see everything and then keep the sound down as well on the east side over here with the, with the different uh, setbacks for the, the trees and, and whatnot. Um, and then that is, those are the main items that, uh, that the Planning Zoning Commission recommended. And so the developer was still um, cognizant of those requests and have uh, helped out with, with making those changes. They're all on board with that. Um, I do know that there are some other um, considerations as far as exactions go for uh, uh, road widths and especially on north on Blake, Blakey Lane and then um, the, the remainder of the new road that will go down to towards uh, south towards uh, Highway 71. Um, and I do know that those uh, folks are here to, or that they could give some more detailed information. Um, I don't know if uh, Sylvia wants to speak on that uh, first, but. Uh, nope, just missed the connection to Jessica Place. Yep, that's, yep, that's on there. Um, so with that, um, I will turn it over to those guys. I know that they want to ha or be able to talk to you, and okay. then we'll answer questions. Yes. 
Good evening. My name is Shannon Mattingly. Um, you've had Charlie at your last few meetings presenting this, and um, he is not here tonight, so you get the shorter version. He's usually the one having to lean down to the microphone. But um, so, um, as mentioned, this is the second reading. The council did approve uh, the zoning on the first reading with the changes recommended from Planning Commission. There was some discussions at the last meeting regarding the roadway impact fees, and so that was something that we have been working with city staff on. And um, so I'm going to not go back over everything that we just talked about, but um, just quickly talk about so the um, the roadway impact fee that you have. Um, that you're considering has a fee up to 2.3 million that was part of the maximum fee set in the study. Um, we do have, um, we did go out after the first reading and have an appraisal done, um, and we have sent that to the city to be reviewed. And the, uh, the approximate cost for um, the roadway for the, uh, the section, the 55 foot new road that's along the uh, border of our property is estimated at 1.4 million. And so um, the, our, our developer's concern was that we're kind of in that limbo where we're, we're kind of in between the roadway impact fees haven't been approved yet, but we know that they're going to be moving forward and probably will be. And so they just wanted some sort of um, guarantee as they move forward as to what that fee would be. And so um, what they would like to request is that they would agree to pay roadway impact fees that wouldn't exceed the 2.3 maximum based on whatever the council decides to set those fees at, and that they would get credit for the 55-foot new roadway right-of-way. Um, in addition to that, they are also going to be um, giving right-of-way right for the extension of Blakey, which is um, my understanding from the city is 65 feet. And so that would be an exaction that would come as part of the project as we go through platting and site plan. And so um, that is not actually what they're asking for an offset on at this point. They're asking for that offset to be based on the new roadway right-of-way. Um, and then the city would construct that new roadway. And that's something that I believe um, staff is agreeable to. And um, we have written into the roadway impact fee. And I know that um, legal has also reviewed the plan and um, has said that the wording is good if the council so chooses to move in that direction. And that concludes my presentation. Um, Hayden Lunsford is also here, um, who is the uh, developer for the project. I don't know if you want to add something really quick. Hand you that if you want it. I don't need it. <laughs> um, I'll keep this short. She pretty much said everything that I uh, wanted to say. I just wanted to say thank you all, um, Sylvia specifically, for your consideration um, for Reed Ranch. Uh, everyone here and all the staff have been really great to work with thus far, uh, and we really look forward to moving forward. Uh, we've put in a lot of work uh, into this, these few deliverables on the screen. Um, as Shannon said, uh, nothing has changed in our PD submission from our first reading other than the roadway impact fee uh, kind of analysis, and we went out and got an appraisal that informed that analysis. Um, we had multiple revisions back and forth with Sylvia and her team, and she's probably sick of us or sick of me. Um, but we ultimately landed on something that uh, they were agreeable to, and we were as well. I think it's a very fair, um, uh, fair share of, of what we're giving and, and what we're the burden that we're going to pay based on these numbers. Uh, that's close to a, uh, a million dollar fee to us in this scenario. Um, and these are approximate numbers. If you guys would like to, to get into the nitty gritty, I'm prepared to speak to that. Um, so that's it. I just wanted to say thank you. Madam City Manager, do you have anything to add for, for council asked questions? I, I do. I would like to commend Hayden and his team. Um, Shannon specifically, she's been on my side, so she kind of knows where, where we are and what you specifically as a council would have to wrestle with. And so given that we don't have an adopted impact fee, the developer was more than willing to meet us halfway. Hence, we gave the 100% credit for right-of-way. Um, our transportation plan also is going through amendments, so I appreciate their willingness to work through what are some gray areas right now, having um, an understanding that they need clarity and they need consistency. So um, Alan and I have reviewed the document. I think it's more than fair, and so staff recommends approval. 
Councilmember Crouch, you have a question, comment? I, I did. I, um, your architect's not here this trip, right? He's not. Um, we've been talking to the people in the settlement, which is the place to the, the spot to the west, and I know we had talked about not having four-story units on the side of the residential, but are, are the immediate buildings along the property line, are they four-story, or do you know? Uh, I couldn't tell on the, uh, on the overview map. Only front 71. I think it's your two buildings yeah. closest to 71 that um, the settlement is further back. It's closer into the commercial area of that, and you'll see it at their site plan. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's the two buildings closest to 71 that are the four-story. And even if that other building uh, in the middle of the uh, property were to go to four-story, that is all before the settlement actually starts to take shape. So the one closest to the cul-de-sac at the upper right of that picture is not four-story? No. Okay, so that and would be the one closest to the, those residents mm -hmm. on that side of the building. Correct. Okay. And just to clarify, we, I don't want to do four stories. That's generally the, the threshold, three to four, of when you have to put in an elevator. And if you don't have to, it's when you want to, because no one wants to walk up four flights of stairs. So elevators are very expensive. And I, our first submission, if you flipped all the way back, everything was three stories, which is a really good sweet spot. Um, we went down to two floors on the buildings closest to Riverside Grove, and so this was a way to just have the option. If we wanted to, to keep the, the unit counts for phase one and phase two similar, uh, which is important to us, this was a way to offset that. Yeah, we, we just had a lot of conversations with the people in the settlement, so I just I want to make sure that we're not neglecting them. And then just when you were talking a minute ago, you talked about that, or maybe it was uh, our staff, I was talking about the trees along, again, the residential side on the east side, but on that settlement side, if you could consider putting some more buffer uh, there, because there's nothing worse than having a three or four story building right next to your back back window. So I know you guys, you've done been great at uh, taking all of our stuff into considerations on your design, but if you could look at that, maybe have a landscape buffer there as well, because that Surely, and we have a lot of site planning left to do. Um, mm -hmm. okay. and, and then I the know. last thing was we had talked about the huge tree at the front of that property last meeting, and mm -hmm. okay, it's our plan That's to save the tree. Good thumbs up, thank you. The That's tree all will I be had. Saved. <laughs> Council so, Member Meyer, I'm sorry, Mayor. So, uh, Mayor and Council, just to follow up on Council Member Crouch's um, conversation, we do have a meeting with the settlement um, folks. They have shared some of their concerns unrelated to the development but somewhat related in terms of connectivity and sidewalks a lot of their um, residents there's only a sidewalk on some portions not the entire portion and then they've shared pictures of us of elderly folks in wheelchairs and walkers on having to walk on the side of the road and then also the daycare folks um, taking the young children hand in hand across sides of the road with no sidewalk so that's going to be as we talk through the code rodeo there are um, north south connections and east-west connections. That is a major connector. TxDOT is putting in a, a sidewalk at 71, but that's at the front. That doesn't do anything for internal um, connectivity. So we will be addressing that, and I, I'm not sure if we set that meeting for next week or not. But. Yeah, it, it is. It's set okay. for next week. So we tried to do it this week, but they called today and asked if we could do it next week. So, But again, thank you for taking into consideration. And we need we need as a council to make sure that we're listening to all the people all all the way around it so in which we have been so thank you very much thank you sir council member meyer uh, thank you mayor so council member crouch uh, stated exactly what my question was because his motion was on conditions at our first uh, reading and it was with the tree with a condition so i'm glad to hear uh, that has stayed. My question to the city manager is, since this is our second reading, are we considering now at the second reading the TIFs? Is that the Correct. consideration we're adding in? Correct. Okay, thank you. Correct. Mayor Pro Tem Kirkland. 
Okay, third mention of the tree. Um, how do we capture the tree in the documents? You should, you should amend the requirements. Well, but in the last council meeting, we we asked for that. So. Oh, I'm sorry, it didn't make it in. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like one of those things that we all nod our heads to, and then yeah. you drive by one day and the tree's gone. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll bear that one. I think we, it got lost in our impact fee discussion, so uh, we can surely add that in. Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure if this is a Sylvia or an Allen question, but it's somewhere in that direction. Uh, what is the mechanism for accepting a fee that we haven't set an ordinance for it's part like, of the development or, agreement okay so they just agree to pay a fee and we agree to accept it and okay. we code it to the right place general fund streets okay <laughs> okay thank you if um, you wanted to add a chocolate bar in that development agreement we would take the chocolate bar too okay. although i don't know where it would go i'd have to share it with everybody but got it okay um and then uh the settlement drive discussion uh you kind of mentioned that uh, the, you know, the project management of this, you know, the, in what order are things going to be built? The, you've got Blakey, you've got Settlement Road, you've got New Road, which is a highly original name, as we all realize. Um, I, I'm just, you know, if, if, if Blakey isn't built and the only access is off of Settlement Road, then you've got uh, hundreds of apartment dwellers coming and going in this area where you have, you know, the pictures of the, the people with walkers on the road because there's no sidewalk. Um, is there the possibility, I mean, of, of phasing in, like having a front drive for a, a season off of 71 or, I mean, just... So I'll let Hayden answer that question, but there is an existing drive off of 71 right mm -hmm. now that I'm assuming will be used for construction entrance anyway, just for ease of access to the property, because it would be untenable to come around settlement to get into the drive. So, um, and that is situated between the detention pond and what is listed as the first four-story building. There's already a drive there. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the issues we will work through at site plan um, is how to phase that because they don't want any more traffic causing congestion on their site than we want um, having on right. settlement. So right. that's what makes the, um, the Blakey conversation so important regardless of the northern part because that site plan is um sideways is sideways yes but the um what is new road connection to 71 is urgent what on our part is taking us a little bit longer is the sizing of the utilities that will go under that line because everything we're picking up on 969 so um we're lots of moving parts to this but you can she pretty much said everything I was going to say. If, yeah. if there's an existing access off of uh, 71, we're going to use it. <laughs> sure. if, if for whatever reason we got to the point of ready uh, to move and Blakey is not ready to move, uh, we would figure out a way to not congest settlement because we don't want that either. If that's our only ingress, yeah. egress, it will be a nightmare for yeah. us just as much as it would be for the tenants of settlement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so let's capture the tree again in whatever motion we make, but other than that, I'm done. Councilmember Meyer. So going back to the tree and capturing the tree, my question is to Alan on the tree. Since uh, Councilmember Crouch made the motion with the condition of the tree stain and it is not shown, should our motion this time also include the condition of the tree remaining? Yes, please. Councilmember Crouch. I, now I had a question for uh, city manager. So um, I noticed in here that it was for uh, the utility sizing was for eight inch water and six inch sanitary. So there's an eight inch water taken in consideration, all the fire protection that's got to go with this project. Yes, eight inches the. Okay. Eight inches the um, standard used to be six inch for adequate fire flow. It's now eight inch. That's what the city of Austin uses and everybody around us. Our chief slash ACM, I think, can uh, chime in. But yes, eight is adequate. And a six inch is just their connection. Our uh, sanitary sewer is going to be much larger. 
I just want to make sure that we were sized properly there. So thank, mm -hmm. thank you for that. Check in on that. Okay, Council, prior to open up the public hearing, to any further discussion or questions for staff? Seeing none, I will open up the public hearing. Madam City Secretary, do we have anyone who wishes to speak on this item? No, Mayor. That makes it easy to close this public hearing. And I will now entertain a motion. Motion to approve. I have a motion by Council Member Patrick. Lee. May I, may I ask a question, or would you like a second, and then I need, I'll ask I need a second. Okay. Please. I well, I don't want a second because I think we need to have something about the tree and the in the motion. So maybe Councilmember Lee can modify may her motion to approve with the additional language to include the tree. I have a motion from Councilmember Lee with additional language relative to the tree. Do second. I have a second? I have a second with Councilmember Plunkett. Now, any further discussion? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kirkman. Um, do we also need to include the fee discussion, Madam City Manager? That would be incorporated into the PDD document. Do we need to include that in our motion? No, because it's already an exhibit to those documents. It's already covered. Okay. Got it. Thank you. No further questions, no further discussion. Madam City Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Councilmember Lee? Yes. Councilmember Plunkett? Yes. Councilmember Meyer? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kirkland? Yes. Councilmember Crouch? Yes. Thank you, Council. Motion passes. We will now move to executive session 10A. City Council shall convene and close executive session pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.071 to seek the advice of legal counsel regarding petition submitted by JMA Entity LLC for removal from the city's extraterritorial jurisdiction of Track 1 being a 2.333 acre track lot or parcel of land out of and being part of the Nancy Blakey Survey A98 in Bastrop County, Texas, in Track 2, being a 5.292 acre tract or parcel of land mm -hmm. out of and being part of the Nancy Blakey Survey A98 in Bastrop County, Texas. Item 10B, City Council shall convene and close the executive session pursuant to Texas Government Code 551.071 and 551.072 to seek the advice of legal counsel and discuss professional engineering contract matters and potential acquisition of real estate related to wastewater treatment plant number three project and other matters. Item 10C, city council shall convene and close executive session pursuant to Texas government code section 551.071 and 551.072 to seek the advice of legal counsel regarding a potential agreement with Corex, SpaceX and Gap Base LLC excuse me, Gap Bass LLC related to real property. Item 10D, City Council shall convene a close executive session pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.071 to seek the advice of legal counsel regarding Texas Local Government Code Chapter 42, subchapters D and E, and matters related to the extraterritorial jurisdiction. Item 10E, City Council shall convene a close executive session Pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.071 to seek the advice of legal counsel regarding a development agreement for the project known as The Hill, located at Highway 95 and Arena Drive. Item 10F, City Council shall convene a closed executive session pursuant to Section 551.074 to, to conduct the first annual performance evaluation of city manager as described in her employment agreement. Council is 754, and we are in executive session. We are back from executive session. We are now in regular session at 1058. On item 10A, there will be no action taken by council. 10B, no action taken by council. On uh, 10C, uh, uh, Madam City Manager, uh, uh, we'd like for you to go back to Corex and uh, work out an agreement with them to bring back to council, hopefully by the 12th. Yes, sir. 
Thank you so much. On 10D, no action. 10E, no action. And on 10F, I'll entertain a motion. I motion to approve a resolution accepting the city manager's employee review per her contract and approve a raise in compensation as discussed in executive session. I second. We have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Kirkland, a second by Council Member Meyer. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam City Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Mayor Pro Tem Kirkland? Yes. Council Member Meyer? Yes. Council Member Plunkett? Yes. Council Member Lee? Yes. Council Member Crouch? Yes. Thank you, Council. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion. I have several seconds. We are adjourned.